Hi everybody, I'm Rachel from Rachel Cooks with Love. Today I'm gonna be making some delicious beef chimichangas. Not only are they super delicious, but super easy. I know you're gonna love them. Let's get started. I'm gonna be posting all the ingredients right here on the screen, and I'm also gonna put them below in the description box, so you'll know exactly what I used and how much. So these are the ingredients that I'm gonna be using today. I've got one and a half pounds of beef bistec, See, some chopped onions, some diced tomatoes, some diced green bell pepper, one jalapeno that's chopped up fine. I've got some Oaxaca cheese. I will be grating this for you. I've got some fresh minced garlic, a little bit of cumin. I'll be using the juice and the zest of one lime. Got some pepper and salt. And I've got some beef broth, and I'll be using some fresh cilantro. I like to get my beef bistec and separate them like this with a little bit of wax paper. And then I just put them into the freezer. Because if they get just a little slightly frozen, they're easier to cut. Because since they're so thin, you know, and then you start cutting them, you have a little trouble. So I like to freeze them for at least 30 to 45 minutes before I get started. And, and then they're nice and firm to cut. So I'm going to cut them up into real little pieces. See? I usually cut them into strips like this. And then I just cut them into little cubes. Just like that. See? And when they're frozen, they're so much easier to cut. And as you can see, this beef beef stick has some fat on it. It's like a good steak, you know. You like a steak with some good marbling in it. So the same goes for this beef bistec. It's a perfect cut of meat for chimichangas. Now if you find yourself a nice big chunk of fat like this, you can get rid of it. But I like to leave at least enough like this on it. You can use any type of beef that you want to use. Like I've made it with beef fajitas. I've done like sirloin, chuck roast, you know. But I find that the beef beef steak just works so well. It's real nice and tender meat. And it's easy to work with. It's got just the right amount of marbling in it where you're going to have fantastic taste. And this is the end of it, right here. As you can see, you can see that. See? So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my area and get ready for the next step. I'm gonna go ahead and put some pepper on my meat like this. You can put as much as you want. Just move it around. Just make sure that it all has some. I like plenty of pepper on my meat like this. See? Just like that. I'm going to put a little salt. Just like that, it's ready to go. I'm gonna be using a cast iron skillet and I've got it set on medium and just a little bit higher than medium, a little high. I'm not gonna put any oil in there because the meat is gonna release a lot of its moisture and a lot of its natural fat. So I'm not gonna add anything to the cast iron skillet except the meat. You're going to notice that the meat is going to start releasing a lot of liquid, which is what we want. I'm going to toss it around like this 
until it starts producing a lot of its own liquid. But you want to just leave it alone for a little bit like this. And then, in about a minute, give it another stir. Now, as you can see, it has released a lot of its own liquid. Look at that. See, that's why I don't add anything to the pan. And I'm going to continue stirring it around like this until all the liquid evaporates. See? Now, as you can hear, it's starting to fizzle because there's no more of the liquid, as you can see. Now I'm going to add my onions. I'm going to add my jalapeno. The jalapeno is optional if you don't want to add it. My green bell pepper. my cumin, and I'm going to toss it around. Now that my onions and my bell peppers and my jalapeño have released a lot of their flavor, I'm going to go ahead and add my garlic. Stir it around. I'm going to toss it around like this for about a minute. Okay, now that I've given my garlic about a minute, I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of flour in here. Because I want just a little bit of gravy. So I'm going to put a little flour like this. But I don't want my flour raw. So I put it in like that. And then I toss it around. To coat it. A little bit more. Hold it. This way our flour will get a little toasty in the bottom. Now that I've tossed it around like that, the flour is no longer raw, I'm going to add my tomatoes. I'm going to add my cilantro. I'm going to add some of the broth. Stir it around like this. I'm going to go ahead and zest my lime. I think the lime zest gives a lot more flavor than the lime juice. That's why I like to zest it.
see all that right there? Now that I have added the zest of this lime, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and cut it in half and I'm going to add the juice. like that. I'm going to go ahead and add a little more. You know the juice and the zest of the lime will give it a fantastic taste. See? This would be a good time for you to taste it and adjust the salt if you want to add a little bit more. I'm going to taste mine. A little bit more salt. Just like that. Stir it around. Bring it in all together. And I'm going to let it simmer for about a couple of minutes. I'm going to turn off the heat. And I'm going to set it aside right here. See? Mmm, it's got that fantastic light gravy, but it's not so soupy that we won't be able to make our chimichangas with it. For a few minutes while I get my other things ready. So I'm grating my cheese like this. This is my Oaxaca cheese. You can use Monterey Jack. You can use queso manchego. That's a good melting cheese too. If you can have queso asadero, that's a good cheese. It tastes delicious. You can't always find it in the stores, but if you can, you can definitely use that one. So these are the flour tortillas that I'm going to be using to make my chimichangas. These are about eight to eight and a half inches in diameter. You can use any size of tortilla. Now they make them bigger. If you want to have bigger chimichangas, that's good. Or you can use the smaller ones to have the mini chimneys. It's up to you, whatever you want to use. So the first thing I'm going to do is warm them up. Now, I just want to warm them up to where they'll be easy to roll. See? One at a time like that. Just takes a few seconds. That's good. So my tortillas are nice and soft, as you can see. That's all we want. I'm gonna go ahead and remove them and put them right here in my tortilla basket. Just like that. Now I'll keep them warm and I'll be able to do one at a time. So I'm gonna get my other ingredients ready and start rolling. I've got some beans, some refried beans. I've got my meat filling. And I've got my grated cheese. You can put whatever you want into your chimichangas. You can even add some rice if you want. But that's this is what I'm going to add. So I'm going to put a, a little bit of beans here at the bottom. Just smear them like this. You don't want to put a lot because you don't want them, you know, real full and soggy. So then I'm going to get my meat mixture and put some right here. Just like that. It's about two tablespoons. Then my cheese. Just like that. Then I'm going to bring them in together like this. I'm going to bring this flap over about right there. You can bring this little corner in like this and just roll them like that. See? Now, 
now that it's rolled up like this, I've got a little tip for you. Now you see this little bowl? In this little bowl I have some flour and water. Now the tortillas, as you know, the tortillas are made with flour. So I've got a little bit of the flour and water mix here. It's kind of like a paste. So I want to show you this. I get a little bit of this and just put it right here. And that this will help seal it, kind of like a glue. But it's made out of the same ingredients as your tortillas. And then just roll it up like this. See? Just like that. Set it aside. Very easy. Sometimes when you put them into your frying pan with your oil, they could open up just a little bit. Most of the times they don't, but if they open up just a little bit, you know, you can have some of the filling come out, but like that, they'll stay real nice intact. I'm gonna go ahead and roll another one. See, just like that. And I'm gonna put some of my meat mixture like this. Oh, this meat is delicious. Oh, I could just eat it with a spoon like that. Then I'm going to put my cheese. Like that. You can put as much as you want. Just like that. Then bring it in together like this. Then have this one come over. Like that. Then put a little bit of your paste right here. Bring this over like that. And then just let it go over like that. See? See that? And we'll set them aside. See? I love the beans in these chimichangas. Now, I also like to put rice in here. And, and the rice works perfectly like that. See? You do want enough in here, but you don't want so much that they'll be too fat and everything will just fall out. See? Just like this. Now bring this over like this. Bring this flap over. You can tuck it in. Tuck it in like this. See? So you can tuck it in like that. Keep everything in its place. Put a little bit of this flour, sticky stuff, right there like that. Fold that in. And just give it a turn. See? See how perfect they are. So let's do the last one like this. This way you won't say you didn't see it. <laughs> you can't say, oh, well, you didn't show us how to do it. There's plenty here for you to see, okay? But that's good, you know, so you'll really know what to do. So I'm going to add some of the meat mixture right here. Like that. See? Mmm. Now we'll put some of this cheese, just like that. It melts and it'll just be beautiful. So then we're going to bring it in together, bring this flap over, tuck it in like that. See, you want to tuck everything in if it comes out and just bring it in nice and snug in there. Then get some of your flour sticky stuff like that. Bring this in, bring this in like this, and roll it. Roll it just like that, and look at that. See? See these? Look at how perfect they are. Nothing will come out. They'll all be rolled up just beautifully. See? So now, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up my area and get ready to fry them. So I've got my cast iron skillet here with some vegetable oil in there. So I'm gonna put a piece of tortilla in there just like that. 
Can you see that? That's about how I want it to be. So that's my my test. So I'm gonna go ahead and get one of my chimichangas. Look how well they're sealed. See? No problems at all. So I'm gonna put it in here slowly like this. And I'm gonna put another one. Now the reason you don't want it to be, you know, too, too low is because if it's too low, they'll get real greasy and soggy on you because the heat is not hot enough. But you don't want it so hot that you'll burn them. So I'm going to leave them in here for about one minute before I flip it over to the other side. It's been about one minute. I'm going to go ahead and turn them over. See that? See how pretty that looks? Just like that. And I'll leave them in here one more minute. So I usually pick it up just for a little bit like this to get the edges. and that's about right so I'm gonna go ahead and remove them I've got a little rack over here with a paper towel down at the bottom and I'm gonna put them up right here now I like to put them like that because this way they'll be able to drip there whereas if I put them directly on top of a napkin they'll get soggy so I'm gonna put two more just like this. So I'm going to get these other two chimichangas out. See how pretty they look? And I'm, I'm going to let them sit there for just a couple of minutes while I get my other things ready. So I've got a nice avocado here. I'm going to go ahead and cut it up. I hope it looks good inside. You never know. Beautiful. You know, we live in an area where we've got so many avocados here in South Texas. We don't have any problems finding avocados here. And they are always so perfect, so beautiful. So I just want it cut up into cubes like this. Just like that. So now that I have my avocados looking just right, I'm gonna go ahead and get my plate here. So I'm gonna put some of my lettuce right here. Just like that. Then I'll put some of our avocado here. This avocado looks delicious. Just like that. I've got some tomato. Put some of my tomato right here. I'm gonna put some sour cream. Sour cream just goes so perfect with these chimichangas, you know. Because the chimichangas are the meat and then the frying and the beans. You want something cold and tangy on the side, so the sour cream is just perfect. Okay. So I've got some rice here. I'm gonna put a little rice right here on the side rice. One of my chimichangas right here. Like I said, after, these are really hot. After you fry these and they've got the delicious meat and all that, you want something cold 
and the crema just goes so good here just gonna put a little bit of crema right here on the top just like that put a few more tomatoes just a little bit of a little bit of cilantro like that and you can put a little cheese since your chimichanga has the filling inside and then I've noticed that the ends, you know, have tortilla without the filling. I like to put a little bit of the filling on the side. See, you can put a little bit of your filling right here. A little bit like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut my chimichanga in half. Can you hear that? Because it, mmm, because it's so crunchy. See? Then you can get some of this delicious salsa I have here. You can put some on there. Mm. Now for the taste test. Mmm. Mmm. Oh my gosh, this is delicious. Mmm. And you see, and if you have some of your meat here, and if you want more of your meat, you can always get some of this. A little bit of your rice. Mm. Oh my goodness, that's delicious. Okay. Mmm. So these are my beautiful, delicious, wonderful chimichangas. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up. Share with your friends. Send me a comment. Tell me what you think. Oh, and subscribe. It's free. Thank you.